Microsoft 365 is a significant repository of all of our business data, yet we also have other business apps that need access to this data, not to mention the custom processes or applications that need to respond and act on changes made in Microsoft 365 by us or our users. Some individuals address these challenges by developing scheduled processes that pull Microsoft Graph for changes. However, this approach is prone to throttling and could land you in the Microsoft Graph jail. A better solution is to use Microsoft Graph webhooks, which notify you of changes enabling real-time action. So in this episode, I'm gonna guide you through the process of creating a reliable and robust configuration at a high level using Microsoft Graph webhooks. Now we're gonna build a project. This is mostly conceptual. I just want you to understand what you're gonna, what you need to do. Hi, I'm Andrew. And if this topic interests you, please hit that like button below the video because it helps me reach more people just like you and grow this channel. And if you're new here, consider subscribing to my channel with that button below the video. So you'll see when I publish more videos for Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure full stack developers, just like you. And check out my bi-weekly newsletter where I talk about the same topics and share the most important news in the Microsoft 365 and the Microsoft Azure space for full stack developers, delivered straight to your inbox. And before I begin, let's consider two scenarios. Let's say a user joins our organization. We might want to automatically create an account for them in our corporate third-party time tracking system and send them an email notification about their new account. Or alternatively, when a new file is added to a SharePoint document library, a OneDrive folder, or maybe even a SharePoint embedded container, you may want to check to see if the file is a receipt and initiate additional content processing, such as automatic expense reporting. So let's begin by discussing how to leverage Microsoft Graph's support for webhooks in your custom applications and processes. To create a dependable setup, you'll primarily work with two components, a webhook, which Microsoft Graph refers to as a change notification, and a web service, and you're gonna create that. What is a webhook? A webhook is an HTTP request that's triggered by an event in a source system and sent to a destination system, often with a payload of data. Webhooks are automated, and in other words, they're automatically sent out when their event is fired from the source system. This term was coined in 2007 by a gentleman named Jeff Lindsay. How do Microsoft Graph webhooks work? The webhook allows you to issue a query to Microsoft Graph and then request a notification that when the query results change. For instance, if you have a query that's gonna list all of the files in a SharePoint embedded container or in a SharePoint document library and a new file gets added, Graph is gonna notify you that that just happened. The web service that you're gonna create is the platform that Microsoft Graph will contact to inform us of any changes. And you also need to create a webhook subscription which tells Microsoft Graph to notify you for a period of time when this activity happens. So essentially you're subscribing to Microsoft Graph's query and asking for notifications via your web service whenever the query results change. Now lastly, there's a concept called Delta Query or track changes in the Microsoft Graph language. Delta queries only return the changes since the last time the same query was actually executed. Now I'm gonna explain these details in a little more depth as we move along. And let's talk about these change notifications or webhooks. Let's examine a specific feature by Microsoft Graph called change notifications. Wait a minute, which is it? A webhook or a change notification? So this is frustrating and frankly, just a little annoying in my opinion. Technically, they're webhooks. Some product manager or some marketing person at Microsoft tried to get creative and to give a name uh, that was more descriptive uh, to this thing. But the only people that are implementing the, these are web developers and webhooks are the industry term. So that's what they should have just stuck with. But you'll find these referred to as both webhooks and change notifications in the Microsoft Graph documentation. Know that they're the same thing. Now webhooks allow applications to get notified when data is created or modified in Microsoft Graph. When an entity of interest is created, updated, or deleted, Microsoft Graph sends an HTTP post to a designated endpoint. Your custom endpoint listens for these messages and responds according to your business requirements. So what can you receive notifications for? Notifications can be received for messages, events, contacts, users, groups, conversations, OneDrive files, alerts, and even more. This keeps you updated and synchronized with data that's accessible via Microsoft Graph. It also eliminates the need for a polling infrastructure where you can frequently send requests to Microsoft Graph to check for the latest changes. Instead, you can request changes from Microsoft Graph when the application receives a notification. This ensures that you never miss a modification to the data that's exposed or accessible via Microsoft Graph. 
Now, most of the work will occur within a web service that you are gonna create. And this web service, it holds two main responsibilities. Now, initially, when a webhook subscription is created, which I'll explain later, Microsoft Graph is gonna send a confirmation HTTP post to your web service to confirm its functionality. The web service's second responsibility is to listen for and process the webhook notifications that Microsoft Graph is gonna send. To receive notifications from Microsoft Graph when something happens, you need to create a webhook. And this is done by creating a subscription with Microsoft Graph. The subscription is gonna inform Microsoft Graph about the entity or the collection which you wanna receive notifications for and provides the address of your web service to post these notifications to. So when you create the subscription, you specify the subscription duration. Now, different entities have different maximum durations that you can use. For example, files in OneDrive, which are referred to as drive items, can have a maximum subscription expiration time of 42,300 minutes. That's about 30 days. And that's good for when, from when the subscription is actually created. For a list of all the entities that Microsoft Graph supports uh, for webhooks and the respective max subscription lifetime, check the document Microsoft Graph subscription resource type that I'll include a link to here. Next, I'm gonna create a webhook subscription by submitting an HTTP post request to the subscription endpoint. And that's at graph.microsoft.com slash v1.0 slash subscriptions. And the payload of this request is gonna contain the specifics of the subscriptions that I'm gonna cover a little bit later. Now the following HTTP post that I'm showing you here is gonna create the subscription to receive webhooks on the user's endpoint uh, for Microsoft Graph when a user has been updated or created. The subscription creation request is submitted to the graph.microsoft.com slash v1.0 slash subscriptions endpoint. And the body of the request includes the details of where the notifications should be sent to. That's the notification URL. The type of the change to trigger the notification, that's the change type property, and a timestamp for the expiration of the subscription, which is the expiration date time property. Now notice that client state property in the body of the request. This value will be included in every webhook to your registered endpoint. And you can use this value to validate that the requests that your endpoint receives are from your subscription and not from somebody else. The value of this property is of type string and can be anything that you want. Now, the request is gonna include, that comes back from Microsoft Graph, is gonna include this UR in the uh, URL parameter of validation token. Now, your web service has to return in the response body as plain text within 10 seconds that value. And that's telling Microsoft Graph that the endpoint that you're telling it to post to is valid and it's up and running. Webhook subscriptions will be good for a specified amount of time. And for most resources, the max subscription length is about three days, but check with each resource for the supported subscription max length time. Now, after that time, the subscription is gonna be automatically purged from Microsoft Graph. And this means if your app doesn't do anything after creating the subscription, it's only gonna get those notifications up to the expiration time that you specified when you create the subscription. Now you should have a process that's going to monitor the subscriptions to ensure that it isn't expired or it isn't going to expire in a certain amount of time. If this subscription does expire, you can create a new subscription. However, you can uh, also proactively renew the existing subscriptions with no interruption in notifications as long as your subscription hasn't expired yet. Your application just needs to keep track of when the subscriptions are going to expire to know when that renewal should kick in. Now, one option you can implement is to check the expiration timestamp on the subscription for each webhook that your application receives. If the expiration is within some certain time frame that's within your parameters, in addition to handling the webhook uh, notification yourself, your application can also go about renewing the subscription. Now, while this solution works in scenarios that receive a high number of webhooks, it kind of breaks down if no webhooks are received in the specified subscription window. Now, to get a list of all of your current subscriptions, you're gonna submit an a HTTP GET request to the subscriptions endpoint, like I'm showing you here. Or you can get the details on a specific subscription by including the ID of that subscription on the end of that request. Now let's look at this process for renewing a subscription. And this is done by submitting an HTTP patch request to the endpoint of the subscription. So as I'm showing you here, note that the endpoint is including my subscription ID in the, at the end of the uh, URL, at the end of the address. Deleting subscriptions? Well, that's as simple as just submitting an HTTP delete to the subscription endpoint. And again, you're gonna put the ID of the subscription at the end of the subscription's endpoint. Now, many custom applications have a need to track and replicate changes between two or more systems. For example, updates to users' information in the master Microsoft Intro ID directory for an organization 
such as their office address or manager and contact phone numbers, they need to be recorded in time reporting systems or other back office platforms. Now, one way a developer can monitor the source system for changes is by pulling the system to detect those changes. But as I previously covered as an alternative to the pulling pattern, developers can leverage webhooks in Microsoft Graph to be notified when these entities change. Now, this addresses part of the problem, but what happens in the case where a webhook subscription expires? In this case, your application may miss uh, changes to entities when the subscription is no longer active and before it gets created, recreated again. In addition, what happens if a webhook wasn't fired by Microsoft Graph because of some system error, or you failed to process it when you received it, or you failed to receive the webhook? In these cases, your application would have to temporarily rely on that polling pattern. But there's another option that developers can and should leverage for certain endpoints at Microsoft Graph that, when you combine them with webhooks, enables applications to avoid the polling pattern in a very robust and a fault tolerant way. And this is done using something called track changes uh, capability. We also call it in Microsoft Graph, the Delta query. Now the Delta query is supported on many different types of entities, including email messages, groups, users, events, and file objects in Microsoft Graph. For a list of all the entities in Microsoft Graph that support Delta query, check out the link that I'm displaying here. And it'll also be in the uh, description below the video to go find for the documentation where it's going to find all the supported objects. Now, the way that this works is that an application submits an HTTP GET request to a particular endpoint. Let's just say it's like the user's endpoint, for example. In the request, the endpoint's going to have this slash delta function that's added to the end of the URL as I'm showing you here. Now, Microsoft Graph is going to respond with a list of all the users in the collection, just like it normally would, but it's going to also include this new property called odata.delta link in the response. Now, the value of this property is a link that your application should save for future use. At some point in the future, your application can use this delta link URL to submit the same request to the user's endpoint, except the response that you get back is only going to include the items that have changed since the last time you made that call was submitted. Now, the second response is going to give you a new Delta link and your application should save that replacing the previous Delta link that you got at the very first request. The app can then use this new value to retrieve all the changed um, items since the second request was submitted. And each time you make a new request, the Delta link will change, allowing your application to only retrieve those items that have changed since the previous request. Let's look at one of these sample requests. The following request is going to get a list of all the users from Microsoft Graph using the Delta query. Now, the first time this was submitted, you're going to receive this list of all the users in the directory. Notice that in response includes an at odata.delta link property. If there are multiple pages of data returned, the Delta link will be present in the very last page of all the results as you enumerate through them. Your apps can use webhooks and Delta query both together to create a robust, reliable, and performant experience. And that's what I would recommend. Now, webhooks are going to notify your app when something changes with a collection supported by Microsoft Graph. And when Graph notifies your app that something changed, instead of your app requesting all the information from Graph on that one entity that triggered the notification, instead it can use the Delta query to retrieve all the changes that have happened since that last request. Now, with this pattern, your app could first create a webhook subscription for changes to the user's endpoint in Microsoft Graph. And then immediately after creating the subscription, the app can request all the users from Graph using the Delta Query option. After processing all the users in the response, your app would then save the Delta Query link. In the future, webhooks are only used to notify your application that something changed. And you can use this as the trigger to resubmit the Delta Query for all the changes that have happened since the first request or one of the later requests. In this way, your application can be assured to not miss any of the changes that happen even when a subscription expires or there's an unforeseen error in processing of or sending of the webhook. Furthermore, I'd set up a scheduled process that runs on a long interval, such as maybe 6, 12, 24, or 48 hours to trigger your process that's normally only triggered by the webhook. And what this does, this is polling, but it, it's only done on a very infrequent basis. And it ensures that you'll catch any gaps in an active subscription or where a webhook notification wasn't fired or received or it's aired out for some unknown reason. Now, I'd also make this as fault turn as possible by having a scheduled process to check for a valid uh, subscription and renew it if the expiration time is coming up uh, very soon. Now, one more thing, suppose if you have a resource that's frequently updated like SharePoint document libraries or SharePoint embedded container, 
If a lot of documents are added or changes are made on a consistent basis, you may want to consider batching those requests. And one way to do this is by implementing a serverless configuration that's triggered off queues. Now, when you receive the webhook notification, it could simply add an item to a list of all the changed things and queue more items for processing. And this triggers your process to request the specific document and perform any additional processing that's needed. Now, this approach results in a more distributed application that can scale out and reduce the load on Microsoft Graph if you're just retrieving individual items. Each item that's landing on the second queue is going to allow you to scale out your Azure function, your container, or whatever other implementation that you choose. I found this to be a really reliable pattern. I'm curious, what do you think about Microsoft webhooks now that you've seen them? Let me know by dropping a comment below the video and let me know if you want to see more videos about Graph's webhooks. And if you like this video or you found it useful, please give me a thumbs up. It helps me grow the channel by reaching more people just like you. And if you haven't already, subscribe by smashing that subscribe button below the video so you'll see when I publish more videos for full stack developers on Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure, including on Microsoft Graph. And let me know if you want to see more videos about Microsoft Graph webhooks. I'm Andrew Connell. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in my next video.